Hey everybody, welcome to Circuit Riding RV. If you're new here, I am Lisa and my husband is Jason. We have been full-time in our 2020 Van Lee Volano since May of 2020. So um, about two and a half years in here and we are putting solar panels on the roof of our RV. So here's our installation process. Um, probably took us, I don't know, a month to finish it totally, you know, working on it when we could here and there in our free time. And the main reason what we, why we're putting solar panels on the RV is because we own this beautiful piece of property in Northern Maine where we are gonna spend summers. So normally when we're traveling, we're at RV parks 95% of the time. Uh, and we might boondock at a boondocker's welcome or a harvest host one or two nights at a time. So we really don't need solar, a lot of solar for when we're traveling. But when we're here on our land in Maine for three to four months a year, um, we are in an off-grid property and this is our only source of power along with our propane generator. Uh, so we've got eight 240-watt solar panels to put on our roof, and let's get going. All right, so we're going to attach these, I think they're Renogy brand mm -hmm. brackets to these New Power, with a W-A at the end, New Power solar panels. I believe these are 28-inch. Yeah, so they're a little short. They're a little shorter here, which will work fine, and I I had to drill holes in three spots to give attachment points for this. So I, I drilled holes in three different spots to attach this. And now I'm going to attach it with the hardware. And we bought our own hardware because the stuff that came with it was only two per panel and a little flimsier or lighter duty than what I wanted. Uh, in the, so that's what I'm gonna do. We got one quarter by three quarter inch bolt. Hex, hex nut bolt. Hex, hex bolt. Hex head bolt, I guess. Two flat washers. One for either side of the material it's holding together. And a nylon nut to go on the inside. Yeah. Sorry, the, bug, <laughs> the bugs got me, I'm sorry. I thought you were supposed to be holding it. I was. The mosquitoes are coming out. Yeah, it's our last, this is our last one <laughs> for the day. And these nylon nuts, there's a, a nylon little disc in there that'll help it grab and and hold it tight so it won't back off. And how big are these solar panels? And their dimensions are they're 34, 34 and a half inches deep, so they just fit on the RV roof between the edge of the roof and where the air conditioning units show up. They fit great everywhere else, but that was the that was the maximum I had 36 inches was as wide as something could fit up there. Mm -hmm. And this is the other half of the bracket that will eventually secure to the roof by way of some strut channel. We'll show that differently or separately, uh, but we're just gonna put these all together to take them up as one unit. So this marries to that, and then they can come apart for tilting the brackets later on. All right, we don't have to tilt panels on your roof, but since we wanted to, we got these special tilting brackets to put on here. And especially since we're parked for so many months here on the land in Maine, it just makes sense to tilt them for maximum usage. And we stay, we may stay long enough other places where it may make sense, but a lot of people admit they do these tilting brackets and then they literally never tilt them again or, so, or super rarely. <laughs> so what other people sometimes do is they just put so much solar panels on top of their roof that it overcomes the fact that they're not tilting them for more ideal conditions. Uh, but I think this will work well for us. Yeah, since we're here for so long. And honestly, this tilting bracket in many ways makes it easier to attach to the roof the way we're gonna do it, which we'll show. So it sort of has another purpose. It lifts it up a bit, uh, so it's off the roof somewhat for it being cooler when it's mm -hmm. down there. So there's, there's some other good reasons as well. This is a little armature that when you tilt it, kind of creates the third leg of the triangle for tilting. So on these big knobs, we also have a locking washer, a flat washer, and then a wing knot on the inside. And the, the locking washer keeps tension against the, against the nut and the bolt threads so that it won't back off as easily, or, or hopefully not at all is the idea. Um, so it does the same concept as the nylon the nylon nuts, it just gives something to help it lock 
so it doesn't back off because you don't want these coming off when you're going down the road. <laughs> so, all right. We're gonna put our first hole in the roof. All right, we're gonna put our first hole in the roof. We're gonna do a little test. I mean, it's the real thing, but we're only gonna do one at a time to start with to see. Uh, so I'm gonna do a drill a hole where this is gonna go, and this will then be inside the channel. The fender washer will go in there. And this is screwed down here. Do not drop the uh, strut channel. It's it's fine. So we'll go right down the right down the side here. There'll be three of these. These are ten feet each, which is good for two panels per. So we could have up to twelve panels up here the way I laid it out. I think we currently have eight, and I think I'll end up adding two more. And the beauty of using this strut channel is you can put stuff on it and then move it around more easily adjust it. It's more like a rack system or a track system, like on the top of a sports utility vehicle. Okay, so what's the screw that you're using? It's a self-tapping. Two inch? I don't actually know. That, that looks shorter than two inches, but that's not two inches. The other ones we bought were two inch. And I think they're that oh, one, okay. they're just not as beefy. And then we got a fender washer, quarter inch fender washer. Oh, with a, with a quarter inch hole. Yeah. And then you've also got this neoprene that you're gonna put underneath the strut channel to, for why? Uh, it's gonna go in between the bottom of the strut channel and the roof to primarily keep this off the roof a little bit so that rainwater can run under. You know, I've heard people when we watch videos, it hasn't seemed to be a real issue, but if I put this down to the roof, there'd be no easy way for water to run off the way it's supposed to. So this creates a gap, because uh, it'll only be lifted up that much where each screw is, and so everything else will have a gap. Additionally, this neoprene is arguably a watertight seal of sorts that we're gonna die cord as well. So even where the hole is, this compression will, will be nice and like a, like a nice gasket of sorts. Okay. And that'll just go everywhere a screw goes in. A strip of this will be under there creating a, a little lift so the rest of it has room for water and arguably a, a bit of a watertight seal for water going in where the hole is as well. Oh, we have wood, that's good to know. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, there wasn't much wood. A little bit of wood shavings. All right, here's, here's the neoprene spacer and it's uh, adhesive on one side. And I'm gonna, I use that to stick up to the bottom just cause it makes it easy for what I'm doing. And I'm gonna drill in, which side did I decide? Over here, it's over here. So I'll just put that in there. And show where that seam is going underneath. Oh the... yeah, it's like a, a rafter of sorts that goes through here. So I figure I can grab more on the edge, but I'm gonna put extras in eventually too. All right, then I'm gonna put a dollop of, of die core under here where the screw's gonna go, and I barely have to put any because it flattens out. All right, that'll get, that'll get squished flat as it should. Then I'm going to put a dollop up here where the screw's gonna go through. You see that? So the screw's gonna go in this somewhere in here. And then when we're all done this, we're gonna come back over and put die core over all of these. But I'm, I'm hopeful this is overkill. The combination of it's a tiny hole, <laughs> there's die core in there, there's this rubber gasket, die core on top. Water can't sit there because the water's gonna be able to run off. And if you look, bring your camera down here, Lise. What, what this is doing is creating this, is keeping a gap all along here so that rainwater can run out. Because this, this roof, roof is sloped out to the edges. It's bowed, the high points in the middle of the roof. And I figure that can't hurt. All right. So there's three of the 12 strut channels that'll go on here. Do the next round tomorrow.
from the sides of the sesame. We've secured the front of the panels first with the cone nuts in the strut channel, one on each corner. And we've discovered that these wires are too short to reach to each other. So we're gonna have to buy some three foot or maybe five foot extension cords to connect them together. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty normal. We'd have to do a weird configuration to have them close, then you'd still need extension cords somewhere else. So that's, that's not an issue. And these panels are probably tilted a little too sharply uh, for the sun coming from this direction. So we'll, we'll lower them down eventually, but yeah. they're just up this way so we have access to screwing things in. Yeah, and then now I'm gonna screw the bracket to these second set of strut channels, which I haven't bolted the, to the roof yet because by doing it in this order, they'll be exactly right. And then I can bolt them down. So I, I think that's a good approach. Good. These cone nuts are, I go in and then they rotate one way. And then there's like a grabby edge that will go up and grab the underside here. So put that in, just turn it sideways. I can line it up where it's gonna go. This is a three quarter length quarter inch bolt that goes through a, I don't know if this is called a, maybe it's a spring washer or split washer that compresses down and keeps it under tension, then a flat washer so that it's, you know, not gonna go through any of the, the slot at all. It goes through the material down into the cone washer that's grabbing this, and this will be anchored to the roof like the front ones are. We're doing a final clamp down here to tie these together. We've got them plugged into each other just temporarily in a partial configuration so that we can still use them. And we've got three more panels to put over here. And we have the the little arm bracket that holds the panel up is screwed in there with one knob just to kind of hold it in place and keep it out of the way. Plus it catches the wing nut, so it makes it very easy to tighten those down. Now we're putting the brackets on for the three that will go on the back side of the RV. I'm only putting three on the back side because the sun, the majority of the sun will be hitting the park side of the front side of the RV. So we wanted more panels over there. Then these are kind of extras that will maybe bring in a little less solar if there's some shadow on them, but we can still have 19, over 1900 watts of solar on the roof. Yeah, plus since the sun's gonna come from that way, these things will cast a shadow. So we're trying to avoid the air conditioner covers, the, you know, just all that stuff. So over there, nothing casts shadow if that's how we're gonna orient to the sun. Mm -hmm. So we also got two different size brackets for each side. For this side of the front of the RV, we got 28 inch brackets, which are a little, a little shorter than the solar panel. The solar panel is more like 34. Um, and that's fine that they're a little bit short because we're gonna tilt them up and they're still secure on there. For this side, we got 41 inch brackets. You'll see that this is a little bit longer than the panel. Um, but the reason we did that is because we want to, number one, pull the solar panels away from the edge of the RV a little bit. Uh, that, because we're going to have to get out there and unscrew the knobs in order to tilt the panels up. And we don't want to be teetering on the edge of the RV. So we're going to pull the solar panels in from the edge a little bit. But also, we do want to be anchored to the edge of the RV because there's a piece of wood that goes all along here and that's we can put in a lot more screws there uh, you know otherwise we could have just moved the whole bracket system in but there's not as much supports here as there is out here so we wanted to secure along the edge of the RV pull the solar panels in away from the edge so that's why we got extra long brackets for the backside. I'm just making sure that around that air conditioner on the roof we're not going to run into any wiring or ducting if we put the channel close to the air conditioner, but... Yeah, just confirming that these duct ducting runs are under the air conditioner, which they are, because it's, it's three feet in uh, to the air conditioning units on top of the roof, and that's where these start past that. So as long as I screw somewhere in here, I should have mm -hmm. no, no worries. If I came too far back here, then I'd have to worry about if there's a wiring run there. Right. So I think we're in great shape. Just want to double check. Yeah. We have a schematic, but the schematic really 
you can't really tell. Van Lee sent us a schematic for the roof, but it's uh, you, not super helpful. Yeah. All right, then this is gonna go to that one. So I'll put another three foot on there. Might as well use a red one just for fun. So we've got all of the strut channels finally screwed down to the roof and all of the panels are attached to them. Now we're wiring them together and just kind of temporarily, we're gonna put the five that are on the front end together and the three on the back together. Ideally it would be four and four, but we're only here for a few more days. We just need to get through a few more days because honestly, when we, once we leave the land, we won't be using this system very much anymore because we'll be at RV parks most of the time. It's really for when we're here on the main land. And sometimes if we're boondocking, we might, we might use it. So we got some three foot extension cords and six foot extension cords so that we can string all the panels together and have enough wire. All right, we're just zip tying these you gotta keep them from flopping too much. We got plenty of slack. Uh, I, I, <laughs> this is the last one. I just, I want, just want to be done. And I'm actually gonna leave this a little bit loose because we're going to keep it hooked up. I'm gonna put a zip tie together on those and I can tuck it in. Okay. So here's our completed project. Eight 240 watt solar panels on the roof of our RV. Um, we are so grateful to have this done. We are leaving tomorrow, so it was just in the nick of time, but we're bringing in great solar here. All of these panels are tiltable. Um, we don't have to tilt them though. It gets plenty of sun if they're flat as well, so we're really versatile, and um, when we come back next year, we will park on our new dirt road, which is right here, and I'll highlight the building of that in our next video if you're interested. Uh, and so our RV next year will be facing the southern sky, so all along the front here, we've got five panels, sorry, <laughs> along the front because that side is gonna get the most sun. And then our other three panels are on the back side, which will get a little bit less, but we'll still bring in plenty of solar. Now we've left enough room on here to put four more panels, one, two, and then some near the ladder. We may not have to put all of those panels on here. We may probably only add two more next year, but we have room that we could put four more if we ever wanted to beef it up, get another battery tower to fill with extra solar. So that's just a little bit of growth possibility. Anyway, thanks for sticking with us through this whole installation process. I'm glad you were here. I hope you got some useful tips out of it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Unhooking our solar for the last time this season. We're topped off good. We may use this. I bet we won't use it more than three times till we get back here, but we might. <laughs> But we'll definitely use it hard when we get back here. We will use our towers, but usually we know ahead of time, so we just top them off where we have power, and then we just have like a one overnight, and they're more than sufficient. So that's our solar for the season here mm -hmm. on the main land. Nice.